Have you ever wanted to learn how to draw and paint sunflowers? Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Molly Pope here. I have a quick little tutorial for you on how to draw and paint sunflowers. I hope you give it a try, I know you can do it. So let's paint. There will be a full list of colors and supplies in the description below. This is done on a, an 11 by 14 canvas board. And at the end of this video, there will be a drawing tutorial for drawing these sunflowers. So what I have is already drawn my uh, design, my sunflower design on the canvas board. And it is a full uh, facing sunflower. There's a sunflower that's slightly turned to the right. And then there's a little sunflower bud as well as the stems and the leaves. So I've already drawn my design on my canvas board with just an, a mechanical pencil. And to begin painting the sunflower petals, um, I've used vermilion. Uh, it's a really beautiful sort of a darker orange shade. Um, and I've used it around the center of the sunflower. Um, and I laid that in first and that goes sort of next to the circle that will be basically your shaded color will be that vermilion we're using that orange for our shade on our sunflower flowers and you're going to paint that around the circle circular part of the sunflower the middle and you'll be painting it up into the petals that are underneath other petals so again we'll be using that vermilion as the shade and what we're going to be using yet next on top of that will be um, you'll move into the lighter colors academium yellow deep and you'll use a yellow ochre so in the middle of the petals and in the middle of the sunflowers so the cadmium yellow goes for the edges on the front petals and you'll be mixing titanium white with a cadmium yellow for the brightest spots which is typically the edges. The middle of the sunflower, um, I've kind of moved around a lot on this painting because um, the paint wasn't dry drying that quickly. So a lot of times you have to do your paintings in layers. When you're, when you're painting with acrylics, even though some of them are opaque, yellows and reds tend to be a little bit more sheer. So they don't cover quite as well. So what you're what works out best typically is just to know going in that you're going to have to lay in your colors and layers. So it's actually an advantage um, to do that. And I'll start out with a darker color first. So like I use the vermilion to do the shading. And then once that dries down a little bit, I'll work into the next color up, which is the yellow ochre and let that dry down a little bit. And the yellow ochre will be in the center of each petal and also it will work into the shade in between each of the petals. And then once that dries down a little bit, uh, I will work into the, um, the cadmium yellow deep, which is a beautiful bright yellow. Um, and it's the color that a lot of people identify sunflowers with. And that cadmium yellow gets more towards the outer edges of the petals and around where the edges where the sun would hit and then you're going to use a little bit of titanium white to mix in around where the sun would hit around the edges of the sunflower petals um, and that middle what I've done in the middle of that sunflower is I've used black and um, it's just a basic black, a Liquitex. These are all Liquitex colors that I've used. Liquitex, um, I love their creamy consistency. And in deep colors like the black, they do cover really well. Um, so the black goes in the center. Um, and then in the very, very center, uh, I used a burnt umber and sort of gave a half shade. Um, a semicircular half shade. I followed the shade of the circle and painted a burnt umber around that. And then the outer edge of the middle of the sunflower, I worked in all different sorts of colors. So those areas on a sunflower are usually teeny tiny little flowers actually. And that's where the sunflower seeds grow. So you'll see a lot of different colors depending on the sunlight that's hitting the, um, 
the sunflowers as they're growing outside. So you might see a little bit of orange, you might see a little bit of green, um, and a little bit of brown, and definitely black. So all of those colors I mixed in this painting of the, um, the sunflowers, I felt like it was just prettier and more interesting to have, you know, all the variations of colors in the middle. So again, just working over the, that sunflower petal, mixing in the vermilion in the areas that are shadow, and then using the um, yellow ochre for kind of a mid-range of the color, and then the cadmium yellow deep is what it's called, but it's actually a really bright, beautiful, sunny yellow. You can see there um, at the upper what if it was a clock it would be at the one o'clock spot on my paint palette you can see um, and it's a really beautiful bright yellow and then once that sunflower dries down a little bit more I'm using a titanium white to mix in with the cadmium yellow deep to get a really bright lemony shade and those that's the color that I used around the tips of each petal, um, the, the part where the sun would be hitting those the brightest. Um, and then, and you just kind of continue working. Um, the center of the sunflower, what I did was I took um, black and the burnt umber and sort of made little tiny pulls out, I guess is how you would describe it to sort of work the petals. Um, you don't want to look have your petals look like they're just stuck around a circle. It's not realistic. There's There wouldn't be just a solid break between the petals and the middle of the sunflower. So what I did was I took the chiseled edge of my um, angle brush and sort of pushed and pulled that um, black and the burnt umber out into the petals. And actually, I took some of the vermilion and pushed it up into the middle of the sunflower. So it makes it a lot more realistic to have those two areas, the middle of the sunflower and the petals, sort of meld together, if that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense and you have a question on that, please feel free to drop that question in the comment section and I'd be happy to explain more. So you can see I'm adding some more detail here with a smaller brush. The more, the larger an area that you're painting, you want to use a larger paintbrush. And as you get closer and closer to the end of the detail on that, whatever it is you're painting, you're going to switch into um, a smaller paintbrush so you can get finer detail. Now moving on to the, um, the side facing sunflower, and it's the same process. Um, black in the middle uh, where you would see, um, you know, where it would be the, the darkest concentration um, of color. And so dark, the black in the middle, and then working out from that, um, I used the burnt umber. And again, on this side facing sunflower, I went in with the vermilion and added a little bit of orange. And I also used some of the light olive green. And again, that was just to add a lot more interest to the sunflower, you know, more beautiful to look at um, instead of just a solid black and brown. It gives it more of a realistic look. So add those colors um, in layers, you know, add, do a little bit, let it dry down, add a little bit more. And you know what? It's only paint. If you don't like what you've done, no worries. Paint over it again. Start over again. It's all just practice. So here, what I'm doing is I'm adding in the um, that beautiful um, vermilion orange shade, um, and that is our shadow that I used around each 
of the center of the sunflowers to add some depth. So it's not, it gives it more of a 3D effect and it will give a lot of dimension to your paintings. If you always have like a shadow, um, what helps, it helps give it dimension. So that, that deep uh, vermilion really makes, will make your sunflowers seem like they're, um, they have some depth and some distance to them. So as you work out from that, you get lighter and lighter in your paint colors. So this little side sunflower also has little green, um, on the left side has some upturned petals. So they kind of curl up over the middle of the sunflower. And that was, I used some, I worked into the greens on that and that was some light olive green and some hooker's green. Now working on the stems, um, sunflower stems are beautiful. They're um, always, they have great interest. They're very thick and um, they have, you know, some, the leaves are beautiful, heart shaped and very, um, they have a lot of texture and interest to them. Um, so what I used to paint those was a mixture of hooker's green, light olive green. Um, I worked into the shaded parts on these um, sunflower leaves and stems. Uh, I went into some of the black and mixed it in with the greens, especially under where a stem would be coming out, you know, under uh, a petal, under the sunflower head it would really be in shadow so you really want to add a lot more depth and darkness to those areas um, and also where there might be a leaf and you know it might be crossing over a stem you want to add that shadow in there and then on top of that to do the highlight you would add uh, the light olive green and even some of the cadmium yellow and even some titanium white to give a really nice highlight on those leaves and those stems And you can see on my palette, I'm using a lot of the hooker's green and a lot of the um, light olive green. And again, you just, you just continue to work. I use a reference photo. Actually, I will use a couple different reference photos um, just so that I can get maybe the, the turn of a leaf. I might like that better in a, one photograph. It might show the veins better in another photograph. So I sort of look off of two or three different reference photos to come up with my paintings um, and for you know it helps to give you a lot more insight into the the realistic features you know that a um, particular flower may have um, I think it just helps to look at a lot of different reference photos so again the mixing in the light olive green um the little bud i started um a little bit of a black in the middle and let that dry down and i'm adding the detail over the biggest leaf at the very bottom um it's got a lot more of the dark middle where there would you know the vein would actually be um and used the hooker's green and the vermilion um i used actually excuse me, burnt umber and hooker's green and black to do some veining on that leaf. And the highlight colors were the titanium white mixed with the light olive green and a little bit of the cadmium yellow. And the little bud is so cute, I love it. It's got, um, I did the interior of it with a, a black mixed with the hooker's green to get a really dark inky green. Um, and over the top of that is um, the hooker's green sort of working up from the bottom um, and then I used a lot of white with the um, used white with the hooker's green and the light olive green to get a really pretty sagey light color of green uh, for that bud and just you have to do this in the little stages so that uh, you can do a little bit, let it dry down, come back at, you know, and add a lighter color on the top. You always are working sort of around your paintings when you're working. Um, do a little bit here, come back, let it dry down, 
and look at it, sort of assess what it needs using your photo reference and just continue. So you can see that's what I did here. I had to go back up to the side facing sunflower and start adding. Um, I really wanted these sunflowers to be bright and cheerful and have that beautiful bright yellow that everyone associates sunflowers with. So in order to do that, I had to do a little bit at a time, a little bit um, working forward from the darker colors. You really have to let that background dry down a little bit um, and sort of working around the painting is perfect. It's a perfect way to let that those areas that are super wet dry down um, and then add a lot more. I really, to get that bright, bright yellow was a mix of the titanium white and the cadmium yellow deep to get that really pretty light lemony yellow. And you can see that really adding that light lemony yellow really helps to make those petals pop. It really makes them have sort of a realistic 3D effect. And I felt like there needed to be, I'm using a finer brush to go back through and add a little bit more black and pull out that center and where I talked about on the first sunflower, sort of blending the petals the two, the middle part of the sunflower with the petals and blending those two together, pulling the black up into the petals and then pulling the vermilion down into the middle of the sunflower and refining the detail around the petals that are turned up over the middle. So you use those little brushes for that. And there were a few little tiny little leaves on the side turned sunflower that I did um, and just basically they don't have a lot of detail. I used the um, a little bit of the hooker's green mixed with the um, light olive green just just to have a little bit of green underneath that side turned petal. And like I said, they don't have to have a lot of detail. You don't have to add perfect superb detail to every little feature in a botanical painting. You can have basically two or three spots on the painting that have extremely high amount of detail and the other areas can just sort of be suggestions of detail. And what I'm doing is using the tiniest brush now. So when you see me switch to the tiniest brush, that means this painting is just about finished. So before like I said before, you start with the larger brushes to cover more area and to get more finer detail, you work yourself down into smaller brushes to give you really fine, beautiful detail. And at the end of this video is the drawing tutorial. Um, I hope you've stuck around for it. Um, and there is a downloadable um, drawing that I did um, will show you how to draw sunflowers. Very simplified. If you have questions on that, feel free to put them in the comment section and I'll answer them for you. I do hope you give this sunflower painting a try. So this is the how to draw sunflowers. Um, so basically what I did is you find the center of your canvas or your paper that will help you to place your botanical design on the paper if or your canvas. If you kind of have a general idea, um, what I wanted to do was have three central um, 
features that you look at when you see this painting. So the botanical, the forward facing sunflower. So you, you're gonna draw a small circle and you're gonna draw another larger circle around that. So you're gonna have sort of what looks like an egg if you were to cook an egg with the yolk in the middle and the white. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a, a, a vertical line from the top to the bottom extending beyond those two circles and then from left to right the same thing and then continue on with two diagonal um, lines so it looks like a star and so I started at the top and you'll see they're just basically elongated um, the petals are just sort of an elongated oval and follow those um, shapes elongated ovals completely around the circles and continue to add circles all the way around stems are you know just basically two straight I did somewhat curved lines um, but if you watch this drawing um, I thought it was important to show kind of how you start from those basically just two circles to draw your sunflowers leaves are sort of heart-shaped uh, sunflower leaves are always heart-shaped they're beautiful have a lot of detail um, and the little bud is basically a little circle that has leaves you know um, coming out in semicircular shape around it so I hope you really give this a try uh, it's super fun to do they're beautiful colorful everybody loves sunflowers thank you so much for watching and if there's anything that you would like for me to draw next, drop it in the comments below. Check back soon. I'll be adding videos weekly. And if you enjoyed this, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you again. See you soon.